This is the new BMW Z4. It's 8.5 centimeters longer than its predecessor, 7.5 centimeters wider, and the wheelbase is 26 millimeters shorter. The roof retracts in just 10 seconds at speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour. And now I'll tell you how it is to drive. Okay, before I tell you how it is to drive, let me just tell you what it is. This is the BMW Z4 M40i. No, not a full-blown Z4 M. M40i signifies the most powerful model, which is still relatively tame. Under the bonnet, you get a straight six-cylinder engine with a twin-scroll turbocharger. Twin-scroll solves the problem of uneven exhaust gas flow. At the same time, it is smaller and lighter than two turbos. 340 horsepower and 500 new meters of torque, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.5 seconds. That's Porsche 718 Boxster or Cayman territory. But BMW and Porsche are completely different cars, and I'm not only talking about the engine placement. BMW Z4 M40i feels unbelievably quick. Forget the numbers, just put the car into Sport or Sport Plus mode. And the Roadster transforms into a guided missile. I didn't say a wild animal because there's nothing wild about it. The Z4 is perfectly engineered. It's a machine which is supposed to be usable and then quick. More about that in a moment. Anyway, in sport mode, you can't feel the Z4 M40i weighs over 1600 kilograms. This is about the same as the BMW 3 Series 330i I tested recently. The sound. Ferrari or Mercedes know how to make the exhaust sound good when it needs to sound good and BMW seems to reserve better sound for its M cars while the almost M's have to make do with the sound generated from the speakers. For my liking, even in sport mode, the noise from the speakers is louder than the exhaust and driving through a tunnel with the windows down was disappointing. There is also too much amplification with the roof closed. Now I understand and I appreciate why Lexus offers a dial to adjust the volume of the sound symposer. Despite fast reaction to the gas pedal and seemingly endless grip, BMW Z4 is nowhere close to Porsche Boxster or Cayman in terms of driving pleasure. Driving through the corners is nowhere as exhilarating and gear shifts are not as engaging. The Z4 is more of a GT than a sports car, which begs the question whether you need the M40i. If the Z4 is supposed to be your weekend toy on mountain roads, then yes, you want to get there fast in comfort. And once you get there, you want to have enough power to climb the peak. However, if you're considering the Z4 as your daily driver, because why not, then you should think about the S Drive 30i. And if you really want to just potter around town, then S Drive 20i is more than enough. In city traffic, the M40i struggles. The stop and start system is jerky, as if the six cylinder engine wanted to break free from emissions regulations. Better save 12 grand on the engine and spend it on the options in an S Drive 30i. As far as the looks go, the Z4 is clearly a modern interpretation of the model it replaces. I generally like it, even though I preferred the side indicators under the BMW badges on the E85 Z4 to the current vertical gills. Lines on the bonnet remind me of the Gina concept. It's been over 10 years and I can still see Gina and BMW design. I also like the fact that most inlets and vents on the Z4 are functional. Even the exhaust is real, there is a butterfly valve in the right pipe as well. And how do you like the Z4? Let me know in the comment section below. In the third generation Z4, or the sixth generation of the Z models, BMW decided to return to the soft top. As a result, the boot volume is now 281 liters, regardless of whether the roof is open or closed. This is more than the two boots in the Porsche Boxster, but less than the two in the Cayman. And there are even two shopping bag hooks. The previous Z4 with a retractable hardtop had over 300 liters of boot space with the roof up. 
but the roof folded into the boot and used up half of the space, making it also difficult to access any luggage underneath. The cockpit feels spacious. Uh, there is even a small parcel shelf behind the seat, so you can put a jacket there for a chilly evening. Of course, there are heated seats and heated steering wheel. You can set the threshold outside temperature, below which the seats will start heating automatically. Visibility. You'd think that in a car with an open top, visibility shouldn't be a problem, but you'd be wrong. Because in case of a rollover, there are these pyrotechnic roll bars here in the back and the reinforced A pillars. Add side mirrors and the visibility is not good at all. Close the roof and you can't see anything over the shoulder. It's not a problem unique to the Z4, but roadsters in general. Fuel economy. I got around 8 liters per 100 kilometers extra urban, driving very conservatively. Realistically, it's 8.5, 9. In the city, get ready for 12 and anything above, especially if you're a spirited driver. BMW promises 7.5 combined. Good luck with that. Brakes are effective, but remember you are driving a 1600 kilogram plus car. The suspension is firm, but GT firm, not sports car firm. I often get asked about whether these screens don't reflect too much light on a sunny day. In case of a regular closed car, I rarely encounter a situation where I would not be able to see what's on the screen because of the sun. However, this is an open car and in the morning or late afternoon when the sun is low, you can't see anything. It's a good thing there's a head-up display. It's an option, so don't forget to tick that on the list when ordering the car. The new Z4 dashboard is pretty much the same as in the new 8 series, the new X5, the new 3 series. There are two large displays, including a virtual instrument cluster, which I find somewhat controversial, but I'm learning to accept it. It's a shame BMW went with the same dashboard template in the Z4. Now, the previous generations at least had dedicated climate control buttons, which were a reference to older BMW Roadsters. It was not just another interior of the main production line. It was something special. And I understand this is cheaper and easier but do you buy a roadster because it's cheaper and easier now there is a place for your smartphone and there is an optional induction charger the door pockets are small there is also a parcel shelf which i mentioned earlier that's behind the seats and the glove box is tiny there are also cup holders here in the armrest asymmetrical armrest which means that the driver can rest his arm elbow rather all the time but uh, the storage inside is tiny i mean it's barely enough for your sunglasses having a convertible means you'll either be cleaning the cockpit like a madman or you just have to learn to turn a blind eye to the dust from this perspective i understand why buttons around the gear lever feel cheapity cheap but the glossy piano black parts around the screens are dust magnet if you don't wipe them down with a soft enough cloth they will scratch sooner rather than later. And make sure you choose leather upholstery, it's easier to keep it clean. A standard BMW Z4 M40i gets things like Sport M differential, Sport M brakes, adaptive Sport M suspension and a wind deflector, which you had to pay dearly for in the previous generation, isofix mounting points on the driver's side, ambient lighting and so on. Prices of the BMW Z4 start at €46,450 for the S Drive 20i with a 197 horsepower four cylinder engine. This is the M40i first edition for a ridiculous €76,000 and it doesn't even have parking assist or reversing camera. I went to town with my own configuration and ended up with a better spec M40i for less than €73,000. BMW Z4 is an accurately designed product. It's a comfortable car for fast long distance travel, but also fun to drive as you get off the highway and cover the last miles to your destination. And do you like the new Z4 and how would you configure it? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Join me for new reviews every Friday and press that bell icon to get notifications. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.